small team of multi-skilled researchers. We have psychologists, we have 3D modelers, we have game designers. And what we do is we actually exploit the mainstream software that, that comes with games from the high street and tailor them, if you like, add our own content to deliver serious training, serious education for defence, surgery and a variety of other applications. We actually share a lot of our technology with the outside world, so we spin into the military from civilian games and we spin out to serious games in the civilian sector. For example, we actually exploit quite a lot of the mainstream game software that powers games like Half-Life 2, Far Cry 2 and what have you. But equally, when we do work, for example, for the Law Centre for Defence Medicine, we can spin that out into National Health Service uh, surgical training programmes as well. We've designed games, for example, to train the, the Royal Navy Dillon minigun, which is a very powerful Gatling gun, uh, individuals who may be suffering from post-traumatic stress, right down to allowing school children to fly a small submersible around uh, wrecks off the southwest coast of the UK. The starting point for developing a serious game is to get the end user involved. It's, it's absolutely key for us to involve the end user at all stages of the design. Otherwise, you know, we could go away for six months and come back with something that's totally useless. Okay, guys, welcome. We're going to give a quick introduction to, uh, to Subsafe. We're going to start off by... So we spend a lot of time in the field, working along with them, seeing what it is their training task actually needs. Then we start doing a storyboard where we convert that information into something we can then program into the, the, the game's engines. Right, I'm going to hand over to Chief McGowan now, who will set you a few tasks just for you to try the, the simulation software out. Okay. You know, we, we talked about the HPS system this morning and surfacing the submarine, so... What Once we've done the initial the uh, work with the, the end user, then we sit down and we construct the, the virtual worlds, the virtual objects and the actual scenarios themselves. And then as we build the objects, we convert them into a, a form that's acceptable by the, the so-called games engines, the powerful software that runs these things in real time and allows you to interface using an Xbox controller or a mouse or a joystick. Once we've actually designed the game, we then go back to the end user and we carry out a series of evaluation trials with them to make sure that what we've delivered is fit for purpose. What I'd like you to do is actually go and locate the forward emergency blow valve. The Subsafe project came about as a result of uh, a concern within the Royal Navy for the training of future submariners. We needed a software program that would allow uh, the students to actually practice finding the valves as they would be on board. So it has to be uh, as close to the actual real thing as, as possible. Welcome to HMS Trafalgar, UK SSN. We're currently based in Devonport, which is in Plymouth. The first thing you need to learn about is hatches and how you're going to escape from the submarine. The second thing you need to learn about is where all the firefighting equipment is. This is an escape scuttle. There's lots of them on board. The evaluation part of serious game design is, is crucial. Even if it's unsuccessful, that is a result for us, so we're not expecting people to go any further and waste even more money. If the evaluation is successful, then we have to look outside of the university, outside of our defence community, for companies who will take the prototype that we've developed and then convert it into a real product. We have to educate the games company not to program things into their game because they can. Everything that goes into a serious game must have some significance with regard to the education and the training of the end users. If they start putting in WoW type special effects, then you're going to start distracting the end user and the training content isn't going to be uptaken. We're in the forward escape right at the front of the submarine. Here we have the main vent. As you open the main vent, the air comes out the top, water comes in the bottom and you dive the submarine and we go underwater. I've been working in the, the virtual environments arena for over 25 years now and it's great to look back 12 years ago when the kind of things that my team were doing would have cost at least £250,000 for a so-called graphic supercomputer. Today we're doing things on laptops that cost £400, the software is available free and it's very accessible to the end users as well. So it's been an absolute revolution in delivering serious games to, to those who can benefit from it most.